Hello everybody, my name is Courtney J. Welcome back to my channel. It's very nice to have you here. Now today we are reacting to episode three of Heartstopper season two. And I'm super excited to see this go. Last episode got a little bit dark. We got a little bit of tension between Nick and his brother. We got the confession that Tao is finally ready to admit that he is uh, not in love, but he likes Al. And uh, we got to see some new friends with Al going off to her college day, which was pretty cool. And uh, yeah, the story is starting to like kind of develop into its own little mini stories, which I really like. It's not just about Nick and Charlie, it's about all the other characters and what's going on in their lives. So I wanna see what happens in this episode and hopefully it ends a little bit lighter than the last episode because the last episode got really dark for Nick and Charlie. And uh, yeah, I just wanna see happiness and cuddles and kisses as we all do, but hey, we gotta have a little bit of drama otherwise the show just wouldn't have anywhere to go. So I'm really excited for this. Now, if you do wanna watch this episode unedited, you can do, it'll be on my Patreon. The link will be in the description below. I wanna say thank you to everybody who is supporting me right now. You guys are amazing. This like 52 of you which is absolutely crazy i didn't think i'd have that much support but i want to say thank you to every single one of you you guys are absolutely amazing remember to give this video a like a share and drop a comment below if you really did like it i want to try and hit like 500 likes if we can and if you want to follow me on any of my social media you can do it'll be in the description below and if you want to have a chat about bisexuality obviously i am the bisexual who had the video in the first series who helped nick but that is actually what i do on here anyway I make a lot of videos on bisexuality, so go and check them out as well if you need any help with your sexuality. And just drop me a message if you're struggling because I'm happy to chat about it. Now let's get in to episode three. What if you go to a bookshop and like choose a book for each other and I'll give you a little reading date? Isaac, that's your dream. That is his dream date. That is kind of cute that he finds that here for his dream date. I mean, we went to the beach. Oh, Jason. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. I think literally just destroyed like the cutest moment in the show. Tao, you're really overthinking this. I'm not. If this date doesn't work out, then I lose my best friend in the whole world. I mean, you can still be friends after. What about if we went to Ikea, like in 500 Days of Summer? Uh, yeah, that's literally going to be his reference for all dates in any movie what's romantic. Season, thank you! Ah, oh, they're going to probably address that he's not really speaking to him, aren't they? Is he going to tell the rugby boys? Hey, do you hear we're having an end of TCC party in the woods next week? And you guys should come. Yeah, cool, maybe. Nick, man, we're not friends with Harry. Didn't That's you? good. We're sorry about what happened at the cinema. Should have spoken up. Lads, good lads. I do know you're not like Harry. Guess it took me a while to realise what a dick he is as well. I seriously don't blame you for fighting him. I know you and Charlie are really good mates. <laughs> I think they kind of know already, don't they? Like, it can be quite obvious, but like, he's got to do it in his own time. And there's no deadline. I know, but it's just annoying when people think we're best bros. <laughs> Nothing wrong with bros. I'm going to tell some of the rugby guys at least. Oh, really? So what about the changing room? I didn't count. Or the English room? Are you kissing me first? Or what about the... Ooh, the PA closet. <laughs> Okay, a teacher knows, but her her past. I think I think she's queer. If I can remember, can't remember if it's in the books or in the series. I appointed you captain last year because you were the only one who could make these boys into a team. But this term, I've sensed some distance has grown between you and most of the lads. If any of the lads say anything out of line, you tell me immediately. All right. Respect that. Yeah, yeah, I will. When I was at uni, things were pretty bad. That was in women's rugby. Lots of lesbians in women's rugby. Oh, I met my wife, telling all my friends. Some took it better than others. None of the guys know about me, so, um... Well, you don't owe them that information, OK? That's really good uh, advice. Nice. I don't know why that made me, like, a little bit teary, then. I, I think it's just because, like, it's... It's compassion. And, uh... Maybe keep the kissing outside of teenagers. <laughs> I just, I just like, I get kind of emotional when things like really are compassionate and emotional. That's why I can't watch Disney films because they make me bawl like a baby. It's your last exam. Yeah. You're nearly done. No. And then it's basically the Paris trip. I'm really excited for the Paris trip. But also like, I know how they try and be secret, but they obviously do very <laughs> obvious things in very public places as well. What about your history coursework? I haven't helped you with that at all. It's fine. It's done. No, it's not. You are amazing. <laughs> I should probably be doing some last minute revision right now, but this <laughs> is more fun. Oh, have you read this one? Of course I've read that one. 
<laughs> yeah, I bet Alice drew all the illustrations for this as well. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna shave off the I don't know what they are like bangs or something. I was not like that after my GCSE. End of GCSE party in the woods in my house tonight. Ah! Make sure to bring your GCSE notes so you can burn them. Unless you're staying for the meeting about the Paris trip, can you all go home now? I really like him as a teacher. Um, je m'appelle. Je m'appelle. Bonjour, je m'appelle Courtney. J'adore un le foot et un le coca. Oh. I love you because of how annoying you are. I mean, uh, I didn't mean that in an I love you way. That, that was just a casual I love. Not me asking you to say it back or anything. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. She's either really happy and caught up in the moment, hey, or she's kind of scared. But she's not usually one to get scared, so... Oh, I guess dropping the L word, like, when you're a kid it can mean almost nothing. But when you get a little bit older it actually means something, so saying something you love someone, it's like almost an act of devotion. So I guess, yeah, that can make people very nervous. Yusuf? Nathan? Are you also having regrets about signing up for this? It'll be a laugh, won't it? <laughs> Oh, he's going to arrive with a haircut. Oh, hi, Jane. I, I was just thinking, do you want to come to that end of exams party tonight? Oh, um, yeah. OK. <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool. And all your friends should come too. Sweet. Thank you very yeah. much. See you there. Aww. That's super cute. I could come out at the party to some of the rugby guys, so if it goes badly, we could just leave. Everyone. Quiet! OK, uh, thank you, Mr. Mr. Farouk. Mr. Farouk just like, bang! Everyone, I hope you're all excited about our Parisian adventure. And we've been told to inform you that boys and girls cannot share rooms. Well, that's fine for Nick and Charlie. Oh, dear. Oh. <laughs> Heartbreaking, isn't it? Heart-stopping. Oh, OK, yes. Oh, no, no, she needs to come to the girl group. She can't be left by herself. <laughs> oh, wow. What the Hi. Uh, these are for you. What's happening right now? Oh, that's actually amazing. I like you romantically. Oh. And I was wondering if you wanted to go on a date tonight. You like me? Yes! Yeah, I guess I was sort of hoping. I've been sort of wondering if you like me back. Say yes! Well... Don't break the man's heart! <laughs> yes! So, tonight, I thought maybe we could go to the cinema. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play to tell. That is like the scariest thing. I've I've been rejected asking people out and it is the most horrible experience. In fact, the worst time it happened to me, um, I threw up and had a nosebleed in the same day and missed my bus home. So it was a pretty brutal day. So this is really a date? Yeah. Oh, it's so cute. That's like the tiniest cinema. Two tickets for Tao Su. What are we seeing? Surprise. So that's two tickets for Moonrise Kingdom at 7.15. Well, <laughs> that's my favourite movie. I know. But you hate that movie. I want to make this your dream date. Ah. Thanks. Screen two. Follow me. Isaac! Hey. Did you want a drink? Not alcohol. Uh, I mean, there is alcohol if you want it. But you don't, that cool too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Come on then. <laughs> I wonder if they're gonna Look be a thing. Him, or you die. Oh. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Wow, that changed tone so fast. You gotta love a defensive big sister though. What the hell are they? I've never seen such a big popcorn in my life. Is that the Everyman Cinema? I actually went to one of them for my birthday. I recognise the seats and stuff. You look really nice, by the way. Thanks. Why did you cut your hair? Well, it just looks better like this, doesn't it? But you always liked it long. I hope you didn't cut it for me. Cinemas are like the best on worst dates. Like, my first date with April was at the cinema, but the problem is you're watching a film, so you can't talk. Uh, so you can't do anything. Text you later. I don't know why she didn't just ask. Maybe she was just embarrassed. Darcy's the most confident person I know. <laughs> Literally nothing embarrasses her. Except telling her that you love her, which I think she's just clocked. Oh, okay, you win, you win, you win. <laughs> The way they look at each other, it's just like, 
encapsulating each other's souls. You want to come out to the rugby boys tonight? I can do this. Yes, you can, Nick. Just think about us being out as a couple in Paris, holding hands in the loo, <laughs> kissing in front of the Mona Lisa. <laughs> Let's go find them. Hold a hand. That's it. Make that small move. There you go. <laughs> oh, I actually get a little bit of goosebumps. <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> why cinemas are not the best date because all you can do is hold hands or rest your hand on someone's knee. Like, sure you can kiss and everything, but it's kind of a waste of a movie. Hey, you are, Nick. I need to talk to you guys. I just think that's probably Wes Anderson's least technically good movie from like a story perspective. I mean, it all hinges on the romance between the two kids, which is so unbelievable anyway, because they- Doubt! They're kids, so obviously it's not going to- What are you doing? <laughs> really shouldn't have picked that movie. It's not my fave, but you love it, so. But if we're going on a date, we should do something we both enjoy. Thanks for asking me out on the date. Thanks for saying yes. There we go, that's better. A little bit more comfortability. <laughs> hey there, there. I didn't know you invited them. Yeah, they're my friends. What? I don't understand what I did wrong to oh. It's like you were trying to be a completely different person. You're the one who's completely different. This is not how I wanted this to go. Well, I guess romance does ruin friendship. I think it's because Tao has an idealistic view of what how a movie romance is versus actual romance. Maybe he was just nervous. I'm fundamentally unlike No, that's not true. true. I liked the old Tao. I tried too hard and I talked too much. I ruined everything. Oh. Tao, please don't say that. Oh. Ugh. Come here. I think we've all felt like Tao at some point, you know, where we feel like I'm gonna go we're home. disliked because of who we are. But there's nothing wrong with who we are. I always feel like I talk too much and uh, sometimes I'm a bit weird. And I felt like exactly like that in school. I think I connect a lot with Tao because I was that person in school. I spent most of my childhood watching films in my bedroom rather than hanging out with friends because I was just nervous about who I was. Where's Charlie? I lost him. Sorry. You said you'd look after him. Not very good at keeping your promises, are you? You don't look well. I'll find him. I promise. I worry about her because she's quite. She's very antisocial and very defensive about Charlie. But like, she almost looks terrified all the time when it comes to the thought of Charlie. Mate, you're right. I just needed to talk to you guys about something. You're bisexual. You're gonna cheat on my brother. Are you sure you're not just gay? And the worst thing is I've actually had them, had people say it to me. Leave your friend with it. Pick a side. You promised you were gonna come out. Why? Me. I didn't want to tell you. Nick doesn't want to talk to you, Harry. Piss off. Wait, what's his problem? <laughs> you okay? I feel really ill. I'm taking you home. I think Nick's having panic attacks. Is he okay? Oh, he'll be fine. Do you mind if I stay for a bit? Just to make sure he's okay. Of course, Dad. Oh. Not past your curfew, though. I don't want to get you in trouble with your parents. Nick's so lucky to have you, Charlie. I love her. She's so, like, just warm and caring as a mum. I made you tea. So? Yeah. You told Harry to piss <laughs> off. I enjoyed that. I'd do it again. You? I'd fight them. <laughs> and you're always mean to you. Aww. So many armour in this. I'm sorry. So I told them, but I couldn't. You have nothing to apologise for. Promise. What do you mean? When we went to the beach, I told you I was going to come out. But you already have to, to at least a couple of people. Finding it so hard. I think there's this idea that when you're not straight, you have to tell all your friends and family immediately that like you owe it to them. But you don't. Exactly. Do it in your own time with who you think it's best to tell at that time. And it can take years. It's not like an instantaneous thing. Let's just stay low-key in Paris. And then it'll be the summer holiday. We can just be us. You sure you're okay with it? Obviously, I want you to come out when and how you want to. And if that takes a long time, that's completely okay. I guess part of me just wants everyone to know you're my boyfriend. And that's, you know, understandable. There's no point them coming out and Nick being miserable when their relationship ends. He wants them to take it step by step. So, like, they're both happy. Because happiness is the most important thing when it comes to these things. 
Oh, that's the end. Okay. So that was the end of episode three, and it was a little bit of a tearjerker in places. Uh, had some happy moments, had some quite drastically sad moments, um, and we're seeing how difficult it is for someone to come out. I mean, like, you watch the first series, and your instant thought is Nick will come out in the next couple of episodes. There'll be a happy queer couple walking around, holding hands, kissing everywhere. But things in reality don't go that way, and coming out is such a difficult situation to go through. I've gone through it many times. I've told my dad, my mom, my friends, my family, the whole world on YouTube. Um, and each time, it is difficult. Even now, I am an engineer, uh, which means I work in a industry which is dominated by men who are very homophobic and I've had them say some horrible things to me about my sexuality so it's always difficult when I meet someone new that maybe that will come up and I have to say so even when you get to later on in your life it can be difficult to come out still so just because you've told hundreds of people doesn't mean that that next person is any easier so I completely empathise with what Nick's going through, but he's already made the first few steps. He's told his mom, he's told Imogen, he's told a group of people, and that's the first little step. Just taking those little steps, getting through to the point where you're happy and comfortable, and then you can start telling the other people the more difficult decisions. Like, I remember I told um, one of my best friends uh, really late on, and the reason why I told him late on is because I didn't want to lose him as a friend. And when he asked, he was like, oh, why did you wait so long to tell me? I was like, well, your friendship meant so much to me. If I told you first and you you rejected me, I would have been devastated. I probably wouldn't come out to anybody. And he hugged me and he said, like, I'd never be like that, bro. And I'm like, that's our kind of relationship. So sometimes you might tell the people you think are easiest first and then the people you think are most important to you you actually tell last because you're they're the ones what you really care about their opinions with um so if anybody's struggling through that you want to talk about it feel free to message me because that may have stirred up some things in some people and i completely understand how that might be difficult to handle as for my view on the episode i think it's a brilliant episode i think it perfectly demonstrates almost the human condition, how we as young people try to act when it comes to romance, like Tao trying to act what he sees in movies because he feels like that's the best way to communicate with someone, but that person liked him for him and not for something what he was expected to be. And I think a lot of people make that mistake, they'll try and act differently around different people, even though that the thing what made them special and likeable is the thing of them just being themselves. And um, yeah, the whole, like, Nick and Charlie thing, it's just, it's going to get better, and I know that, but it was a, yeah, it was a bit of a difficult watch, um, but I did enjoy that episode, I'm enjoying the Paris trip, which I think might be the next episode, or it might be the episode after, that's going to be really exciting, seeing how they are in Paris, and it's in oui, oui, and croissants, and a beautiful Parisian view, I don't know why I'm carrying on with the French accent when I'm not speaking French, but uh, yeah, looks very good, very, very good, anyway, I'm gonna say thank you for watching, thank you for all my patrons, thank you for liking this video. If you're at this point, give it a massive like, helps me out so much. Drop a comment, what was your favorite part of this episode? What are you looking forward to in the rest of the series? And I'm going to say love, peace, and chicken grease. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!